a quick tutorial on how to create an animated style button, especially in the style of the sort of popular Valorant style buttons. I'm going to go step by step, so I encourage you to follow along either in CodePen or in your own little uh, local environment so that you can create these yourself. So let's get right into coding. All right, so here we have the final result. If we hover over top of it, and it gives us that nice little hover. Okay, so I'm going to take actually all my code here away and see what we're left with the original. So we see we have the button tag and the A tag. Very simple, but what we want to do is style it to make it look like what we just had. So first, let's take a look at the HTML. Our HTML here, we have the class that we're going to have, the Valorant button. Then we have a span tag inside it with the class underlay, and then another span inside of that one for the label. Okay, and we'll get into a, what we're doing here for each one. So first off, let's start with the main class. Okay, our Valorant button. So starting off with that, I'm going to take it from my, my notes over here. Oop, there we go. So here, we just send the font size. In fact, we've already going to set the font size on the label itself, so we actually don't need that. And then we're going to set it the color of our link. And this is good to have it on the A tag because depending on your theme that you're using, you're probably already setting the color for just a text link. So we want to make sure that we set the color here as well. Then we've got some margins, just top and bottom, to give some spacing, also because those those border lines will be going extending to that. So we might want to add a little bit more margin if we're going to have buttons on top of each other. And then of course our font weight background set to none. So those are the basics there. The next we have that border that we have. And this is our suedo elements. So we're using the before and after. So instead of having to use any type of SVG or anything, we just want to use a suedo element that has those borders. So what I did in this case is both, since it's a suedo, you have to put the content and just set to nothing, two brackets, that's it. Set the top here to zero, so we want to the top of our button. But then as you notice down here, I have the, the translate set to minus 10, so it's gonna go 10 pixels you know, above it, the button. And for the after element, we want 10 pixels below. And then instead of top, I use bottom. Then the width on both of them is set to 100%. And then we added some padding of 10 pixels. But then I also said to the box sizing of content box. So we have two options, a border box or content box. When you set it to border box, that 100% will include that padding. When you set it to content box, that 10% will sort of go above that 100%. So it's like 100% plus the 10 pixel padding. And that's what we want because we want outside of the area. Then we have left 50%. So we want to kind of push it in 50%, but then we want it centered. So that's why we have this translate X of minus 50%. So now it's absolute center. So that's a good way to get anything that you want to absolute position centered. So next we go with our underlay. And this is going to be where we have our background color of that red and also the black that kind of swooshes in, we could say. So, yeah, let me grab that CSS here and put it in. So going step by step, here we have our underlay. I'll hit save so that you can kind of see the update. That underlay is that span. We want 100% width and height. We want to put some padding three pixels on it and then we also have the border box this time it keeps it within that area and then overflow hidden because when our suedo elements we want it it's going to be outside and if I take away the hidden aspect if I just hide that for a moment you can see how it's outside that's why we want it hidden so there we go so that's that then next we have our before element. This is where that black part is coming in. 
Then we set it to minus 10, so it's outside of the area, minus 110. And then also the width and height is a lot larger than our actual element because you know, we want to make sure that it covers the whole span when it goes across. Then we set it to Z index of 10, it's absolute positioned. But then our after element, we actually set it to the Z index of 5, so it's behind that black part. Okay, so that's where Z index is important to use so that we can set where we want things on the different layers, you could say. So that's the beginning. Now, next we get to our label. And our label has a couple parts. There are. Boom. So our label here, that's where our text was inside. Again, we make it a block. We want width and height 100%, so it kind of goes the size of our area. We're adding some padding in, so that gives it the shape that we have right now. And we set our font size onto it. Again, we put border box and a Z index of 20 because we want it above those that pseudo element that comes apart, that black, that swoosh. So we want it above that. So that's why we put it to 20. And then we just, you know, different font sizes. And because we've added these different uh, percentages and they translate of minus 50% to left 50%, if I change the padding on this, yeah, I'm sure purchase that. We can see how it adjusts and everything is still centered and properly aligned. So the back, boom. And then that little after element, well, this is just that little black square that was part of the design that was there. So that's our basic button. But as you can see right now, it doesn't have any hover effect. If I hover over the A tag, we get the cursor, pointer. If we hover over the button, we don't get anything. So what we want to do is add in our hovers. The first one that we're going to add in, that's important, so now we can, is a cursor pointer. So now they both show the cursor. So now we know it's clickable. The next is what we'd want to do is add in that area so that essentially when we hover over top of it, we get those animations. So here we have underlay before, that was our black part that comes over. So instead of 110%, it's set to 10%. And then our, here on our label, that after the little black square, we change it to white. And so we see, and that's our hover effects. So that's it. That's it. And now one extra other feature that I thought was kind of nice is that if I add in the here active of before and after on there, I can change the padding. And that way, when I hover over top and I click, it squeezes in. Click squeezes in. So just a little extra feature there. It's so very simply how we can create that kind of nice uh, animated style effect for a button just using HTML, CSS, no need for SVG or anything extra. And we can still get that nice style. So if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And of course, subscribe because I'll be adding some more button styles and tutorials in the future. So subscribe so that you can get updated when they come. Thanks.